Hello all. So today I'm going to have a look at how I'm at how to import virtual machines from the data store into ESXi. So the way that we do that is by going into virtual machines and you see how I have these invalid virtual machines here. You see like my Plex Media server, my WireGuard server, the VMware virtual machine itself. So in other words, the VMware vCenter server. And we're going to do some extra cool stuff with this later on. Um, but for now, all of these servers, which were on my old previous installation of ESXi that's now been cloned, have VMFS volumes, which no longer exist. That's the reason why I'm getting those errors. So what I need to do to fix that, and which is kind of the point of this video, is to import these new virtual machines. So what I've done is that I've set up an SSH connection and I've copied over the old virtual machines from my old drive through the VMFS script that I've had earlier. And I've put them into the drive, which is on this new ESXi uh, installation. So in order to do that, what I've done is I've gone to create register so that way I can register the new virtual machines. And then all I do is I click on register existing virtual machine and click next. Now, ESXi will ask you for the VMX files, which are part of the old virtual machine. So what I can do once all my data has been transferred is click select. From here, what I've done is I have created a folder called test one, which houses all of my old virtual machines. So from within here, what I do is I click on the server which I want. So in my case, that could be the Plex Media server. And I look for the VMF, VMX file. The VMX file will then be presented, which is the Plex Media server in my case. And that's this file right here. It will also have a couple of other files in the transfer, such as the VMXF file and the VMSD file. So the one that we're in, we're particularly interested in besides those two files are the VMDK files. So the VMDK file is the hard drive of the machine itself, which is the one that we want, because without that, we can't boot up this machine. So let's click on VMF, VMX, which is our configuration for our virtual machine. And we'll click next to import the virtual machine, finish to start finish the stop. And as you can see here, we now have our Plex Media server. Now, in my case, this won't still work because I have a slight issue with the server, which I'm going to present on the next video, which is to essentially fix the virtual to phys physical adapter networking. Uh, once that's fixed, then most of my server should then work. And as you can see in here, we also don't have very intrig very intriguingly, we, we haven't got rid of this particular error, which is fine because we've already imported the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unregister this machine, click yes, and that should be it. Okay, well, the next thing to do, I suppose, is to see whether or not the virtual machine works. So what you can do is you can click on the little play button here and it will give you this, right? So even though you finish the transfer, it, VMware will ask you what's happened to this machine. Did you move it? Did you copy it? Like, I don't recognize this machine. In my case, I've kind of moved it because I moved it from one instance of ESXi onto another instance of ESXi with the same processor. So I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to click answer on this. And that should now boot up the virtual machine uh, without the IP address, unfortunately, but it should still be working. So when it reaches the part, because this is a Linux Ubuntu instance, when it reaches the part of the network manager, which is probably what it's doing now, it won't find an IP. It will just log the one which is already there if it's statically assigned. Okay, so we're back on the Plex Media server that I have. So in my case, the way that I can check that everything is working is through 
the docker commands, in my case, because this is an old Plex Media server. I'm not expecting it to work, like I mentioned, because we don't have an IP address assigned. And the one that's on the actual interface is statically assigned, which is fine, but it won't necessarily be working uh, for connectivity purposes. So I can run a docker ps command for, for those who want to follow along. And it looks like all of my servers are up, which is fine. Uh, so yeah, that looks like it's working. It's just not, it's not, uh, at the moment it's not reachable is probably the correct word because even if I type in the IP address, I won't be able to connect onto the server at this point in time. But as you can see, I've demonstrated that you can indeed import virtual machines from the past into the new instance of ESXi from your old data store. Okay, so that's it from this video. Like, comment, subscribe. All and every comment is welcome. And have a good day. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.